5 Drivers to Watch Out For in 2024 The 2023 Formula 1 season has reached its midway point, and while we don't have races until the end of August, that doesn't mean there isn't anything exciting. So, in the spirit of what's often referred to as the silly season, and without any rules and regulations, today we will look at some of the Formula 1 drivers who might be at risk of losing their positions in 2024, considering how events have unfolded so far this year. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Kevin Magnussen the first driver on our list is Kevin Magnussen. The popular K-Mag stunned everyone with his Viking comeback in 2022, a term attributed to Haas team boss Gunter Steiner. He managed to double the points of his then-teammate Mick Schumacher throughout the season, even astonishingly securing pole position in Brazil. So why is he mentioned on this list? Well, firstly, the Danish driver's contract is one of the few set to expire in 2023, which invariably casts a spotlight on his future with the team. This focus is further intensified when his performance is directly compared to his teammate, Nico Hülkenberg. Though Hülkenberg was away from a full-time race seat for four years, he has outperformed Magnussen in both points and overall performances this season. Hülkenberg has even reached Q3 an impressive six times compared to Magnussen's single appearance. Adding to the complexity of Magnussen's situation, Hülkenberg was handed a multi-year deal in 2022, ensuring his seat security. While Steiner has supported Magnussen up until now, he has also issued ultimatums as he looks to finalize the team's driver lineup earlier than the previous year. The lingering question then becomes, if Steiner were to decide to part ways with Magnussen, who might replace him? Given and Haas's close relationship with Ferrari, their engine supplier, Antonio Giovinazzi's name might surface as a contender. His previous testing with the team and recent Le Mans victory could make him an appealing option. Logan Sargent to some, this situation might appear clear-cut, as Logan is a rookie driver who has yet to score a point in F1 and has been consistently outperformed by his teammate this season. However, it's worth considering why he could still retain his seat. Logan Sargent undoubtedly has talent, and his remarkable rookie season in F2, finishing fourth with two victories, earned him a seat in 2023 with Williams as part of the Williams Driver Academy. Since joining F1, Sargent's standout performance came in his debut with an 11th place finish in Bahrain, but what is interesting is that as the season progresses, he seems to be growing more comfortable with his car, and both he and his teammate Alex Albon continue to see improvements. It's also essential to acknowledge the commercial value Sargent brings to both F1 and specifically to the Williams team, which has struggled financially in recent years. Being the first American driver in the sport since its growth in the United States, he represents a marketing goldmine. However, Formula One is an unforgiving sport, especially if track performance doesn't match off track value. Sargent needs to capitalize on his time on the grid and score some points, particularly since Albon has demonstrated the car's potential at certain tracks. Further complicating Sargent's situation, Mercedes, with its established good relationship with Williams, may consider other talented drivers like Fred Vesti if he maintains his impressive form in V2 and Mick Schumacher, who continues to be a promising prospect. Therefore, Sargent's position might not be as secure as it appears, despite his potential and marketability. We will see how things will develop for the young American. Guan Yu Zhou Given his strong qualifying performance at the Hungara Ring recently, it may seem harsh to question Zhou's position, and in my view, this situation largely hinges on another rising star who might be eyeing Zhou's seat. Theo Porcher's name has been circulating in the paddock since he became the youngest ever F2 feature race winner at Monaco in 2021. At just 19, he currently leads the Formula 2 standings after finishing as the runner-up to Philippe Drogovic in 2022. As a Sauber Academy driver, the French talent is someone the organization would not want to lose, especially if he clinches the junior championship this time, and this sentiment would be heightened by the interest of other teams and Sauber's lofty aspirations for 2026, when they will join forces with Audi. Although the car has not been exceptional this season, neither Joe nor his teammate Valtteri Bottas have particularly shined. However, Bottas, a 10-time race winner, has a contract with the team until 2025, ensuring his seat 
safety. Having an experienced teammate like Bottas alongside Porcher would likely appeal to Sauber. Given this context, Joe might want to enhance his performance in the season's second half, considering how his competitors have been performing in their respective competitions up to this point. Although Joe said he was open to other opportunities next year should they arise, his priority is to stay where I am and continue to build on his progress through 2023 with the team. It'd be a surprise to see the team look elsewhere, particularly given the commercial boost Joe provides from China. Sergio Perez now we're getting into the more fun ones. Christian Horner continues to reject the idea of Sergio Perez losing his Red Bull seat for 2024, and it makes sense considering Perez's struggles with confidence during the season's first half. However, Red Bull has a history of unexpected decisions, as evidenced by their handling of Nick de Vries earlier this year, so anything is possible. At Spa, Perez definitely improved, breaking a streak of missing Q3 five times in a row, qualifying ninth in Budapest, and then starting on the front row to finish second in a Red Bull 1-2. But the situation is not all rosy. After winning two of the first four races and declaring himself a championship contender, Perez is now trailing by 125 points behind leader and teammate Max Verstappen, who has been in dominating form. And with the recent reports from the Dutch Telegraph saying that his bonuses could be changed if he is more than 125 points behind his teammates, one cannot help but wonder, is this the beginning of the end for Checo's Red Bull tenure? If the rumors of Liberty Media pressuring Red Bull to increase internal competition are true, the team may have no choice but to seek a more competitive second driver, and with the recent addition of Daniel Ricciardo to their AlphaTauri sister team, both he and teammate Yuki Tsunoda have an opportunity to make a claim for the top seat. Should Ricciardo outperform Tsunoda, he could demonstrate that he still has what it takes to compete in a top team, possibly replacing Perez. Conversely, if Tsunoda beats Ricciardo, he could prove his worth to Horner and Red Bull's advisor held Marco, so we could have a very interesting offseason in 2024. If Perez manages to secure a few more wins in the season's second half and retain second place in the championship, it would likely secure his position, as this is generally what Red Bull expects from Verstappen's teammate. Additionally, Perez should feel confident in the upcoming street circuits where he has demonstrated genuine pace, but with Red Bull, the situation is never entirely predictable, which leads us to the final driver on our list. Daniel Ricciardo while previously suggesting Daniel Ricciardo might have a shot at a top seat in motor racing, his situation might appear contradictory. Currently on loan at Alpha Tauri, his future in 2024 remains uncertain, as Ricciardo's performances have convincingly demonstrated that replacing Nick de Vries was the right decision, and he will likely provide a more compelling comparison with Yuki Tsunoda than the Dutch driver could. As I mentioned earlier with Perez, Ricciardo has an opportunity to put pressure on Red Bull by outperforming Sonoda in the season's second half, particularly now that he should be more comfortable with the car. However, if Sonoda outpaces the Australian, questions may arise about whether a driver like Liam Lawson, with his impressive showings in Super Formula, would be a better fit for the seat. Some had even called for Lawson to replace De Vries initially. Alpha Tauri clearly isn't the end game for Ricardo, who has aspirations to return to a full-time seat at a top team like Red Bull, where he enjoyed the best results of his career, and he has said that a return to Red Bull would be a fairy tale way to end his career. But it begs the inevitable question: has he just wasted the last five years to be back where he was? as the Robin to Verstappen's Batman. Ricardo's future is now in his hands, making the second half of the season a thrilling prospect. Whether his efforts will lead to a more prominent position or leave him on the fringes of the top tier remains to be seen. His performance, along with the dynamics within Red Bull and Alpha Tauri, will likely determine his fate in the fast-paced and unpredictable world of Formula One. So, what do you think? Do you think any of these drivers will switch teams or will not be driving in Formula One next season? Let us know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below, and thank you for watching Racing Zone!